Hello, Sin High School. This is Miss Collins, and you're watching Sin TV. Turn it up. Uh. Hear a knock on the door, and the night begins. Cause we've done this before, so you come on in. Make yourself at my home, tell me where you been. Pour yourself something cold, baby, cheers to this. This is Sin TV. With Marianne Abdi. Stephanie Hernandez, Raymond Vignon, Adnan Hadzala, Jonathan Vera, Edgar Flores, Natanya Tai, Reagan Ivy, Simone Smith. And Kamea Spearman. Now, step inside Studio 346 with your anchors, Simone Smith and Edgar Flores. Hello, and welcome to our first episode of Sin TV. We're excited to share this pilot episode with you and hope you look forward to next year when we'll be providing your morning announcements. Our top story for today is Sin's 44th Annual International Fest. On Thursday, May 12, performances reflecting cultures from around the world converged on the stage of San Hall to celebrate our diversity. Our very own Adnan Hadzalik was there to show you some of the highlights. My favorite part of International Fest, I think, is you know sort of the, the camarader camaraderie that you uh, you build. You spend a lot of time working, uh, you know, long hours uh, working with the same people, um, and you really develop a special bond. I've been really liking International Fest because I've gotten closer to the people that are in my group. Because two of them I never really talked to and and I got closer to them and everyone else got closer. So I think International Fest is a really cool idea to represent all the different nationalities, especially since San is so diverse. So it's really cool that everybody gets like a look into all the different cultures and different dances and stuff. The benefit is it showcases everyone's different you know, backgrounds and you don't really get that with a lot of schools. about International Fest is I get to see lots of cultures and their traditions and it explores the cultures and what it's all about. I also never knew like how the, there's a lot of different types of dances and it's just really cool to find out new ones every year. So, Simone, I heard you were helping out with International Fest this year. Yeah, I was basically running the show. Yeah, that's why I saw you backstage at Stagehand, right? Anyway, Edgar, on to our next story. Sin juniors are eagerly awaiting their scores on the ACT. Let's take a look back to the day of the test to see how Sin students and teachers kept their cool facing the most important exam of their lives. Juniors filed into an empty Sin Tuesday, May 3rd, to take the ACTs. A test that plays a huge role in college acceptance and students' college career overall. Trying to relax for the test they've been preparing for for three years, juniors enjoyed a healthy breakfast provided by the school. Taking Cambridge and practice tests in their classrooms, students felt well prepared. Junior Marissa Dobanese shared how she prepared for the test the night before. I went over everything, what we had to do, what we were expected to do, and I just relaxed the rest of the day to not cram. So, yeah. With much anticipation, students are awaiting their scores, which are to be expected in June. Until then, 
try to keep distracted, poor dogs. That sure was a lot of pressure. I'm really glad that's over. No doubt, but don't forget juniors, you can always take the test again early in senior year if you're not happy with your scores. Go to act.org for more information. All right, let's hit the hallways with our woman on the street, Reagan Ivy, and her question of the day. Hi, I'm Reagan Ivy with our question of the day, and today we will be asking some of our teachers if they know what our current slang words mean. Here we go. So Mr. Cullinane, what does it mean to spill the tea? To spill the tea, um, I think spilling the tea is like when a guy spills his testosterone and doesn't actually like uh, do the manly thing, like he kind of wimps out of something, so he spills his uh, testosterone. No? Spilling the tea. They're, they're telling someone secrets. Yes! <laughs> what? You never heard spill the tea? No. Let's go spill the tea. I have no idea. You never heard that? No. Oh my god. I thought this was going to be easy. Just take your best guess. Um. Oh. <laughs> I have no idea. You mean to be an op. An op? I say that all the time. It's like, uh, it's an op is someone with a lot of opinions on matters. So like I have a lot of ops on current events. Um, I'll add. No, not, not even close actually. Okay. Uh, if someone calls you an op, yeah. um, it means that you are selfish and you try to get things for yourself. Like you're opportunistic. Oh, opposition. Thank you. Yes, I know. That's good school, man. <laughs> first teacher, you get that one right. That's from the ghetto school. <laughs> How to dab? I do know this. My uh, my young son at three months has mastered the art of dabbing. Uh, he's often doing <laughs> sort of perky jerky <laughs> movements, and I think that's what uh, the kids are doing. They're dabbing. And... No, I'm, I'm actually not saying that. It's my guess. Um, dabbing, uh, trying something, dabbling. I don't know. No, it's a dance move. Oh. <laughs> I'm likely to know that one. I mean, oh, it's that ridiculous dance, yes. Can you show us? No. Please? <laughs> no. Wow, those teachers really need to up their game this summer. Next up, we have a very important story that will impact all of SEN. Marianne Abdi interviewed our principal, Ms. Beck, about the budget crisis. Hi, I'm Mary Beck. I'm the principal here at Sun High School, and I want to talk to you a little bit about the funding situation in the state of Illinois and why it's important for you as students to take action now. What we're asking is that we get more active. Um, it's important because here at SEN, um, the proposed budget cuts to us are about t between 25 and 30 percent. A 25 to 30 percent budget cut here at SEN High School means that we will lose approximately $2.8 million. And $2.8 million at SEN translates to less teachers, less opportunities, and less experiences for all our students. Um, less teachers means that not only Will people that you as students that you've built relationships with uh, and teachers that are here uh, because they care and uh, want you to be successful, uh, they won't be able to be here. And so some of those relationships will go away. Less teachers also means that we need to put more students per class. Currently, we average about 27 to 30 kids in a classroom. If we have to start cutting teachers, and our student population remains the same, which it has, that means we'll have to start adding students to classes, which means we'll start having upwards of 40 to 50 students per classroom. That will absolutely impact your learning. Um, this also impacts our extracurriculars, our sports, our journalism. Everything that we do as a school is funded through the money that we receive. And if the money is cut and we lose millions of dollars, we won't be able to provide those in the same way. And these four years at SEN are supposed to be about you and your development as a student, your development um, as a person. And so every year, every minute that you're in this building is important and it's vital to who you're going to become. So I take this very seriously and I think you should too. Some of the things that you can do as a student um, and as a student population is you can start looking at and talking about this with your parents and with community members and with people you know. 
Take to Facebook. We've started a campaign that originated here at Sen High School that is the Thrive or Survive campaign. And we depicted what this school would look like if we had 48 kids in a classroom, what our instruction would look like and how it would change. So start taking to social media. Use the tools that we have. Take pictures of what you think a school would look like without culture or without extracurriculars. Take pictures and post them. Use the hashtag CPS Thrive or Survive. And then use the hashtag CPS Equality Now. Um, the 20 for 20 campaign, promote that. Talk to your parents about it. Ask your parents to write letters. Many of you already wrote letters that will be taken to Springfield to present to Governor Rauner. Um, keep doing that. On the uh, 20 for 20 campaign with the email, you can just go on, you write your name, your address, and then it automatically, and your email address, and it automatically sends letters of support directly to your congressman and your state legislator, as well as the governor, saying, I support this bill, I support this change. And it's really important that we start there. Whether it's a local, locally elected school board that people are really promoting, whether it's um, reconfiguring the way that we fund the schools uh, through our tax dollars, whether it's a tax increase. There's a number of solutions out there. I don't know which one is right, but we can't let it go. We can't just say the state has fixed it and it's done because it is our responsibility. Once the state has fixed what they need to fix, it's then our responsibility locally to fix what we need to fix here in the city. I know this is a complicated issue, but I urge everyone to go to the website at the bottom of your screen and let your representatives know that we need more funding. Let's turn now to Adnan Hazalik, who joins us in the studio to introduce the second part of a web series he created with Kamea Spearman. Hi. Last semester, Kamea Spearman and I debuted the first episode of our web series titled Coming Out, featuring Sen Jr. Anthony Rabadon. Today, we'd like to share with you episode two, featuring Sen Freshman Dash. As CPS has recently instituted policy that allows transgender students to use the bathroom of the gender that they identify with, the story holds even more weight. I identify as pansexual because I'm attracted to people regardless of their gender identity expression or what parts they have. And I'm transgender, meaning I identify as male even though I was born as a female. My experience has been kind of hard. It's hard in school. A lot of kids, when I first came out, didn't accept it. They would either make fun of me or um, they just flat out refused. I don't pass very well and that's hard on me because it's hard for me to be out in public and getting misgendered, it just hurts. From what my parents told me I, and what I remember, I was a really girly girl when I was little. So when I came out, no one really believed me. My dad was supportive. Um, I told him first. He was, he was there, he was like, yeah, whatever you identify as, that's what you are. But my mom, although she supports me, doesn't really believe me. I always think that maybe understanding isn't synonymous to supporting. So just because she understands what I'm going through doesn't mean necessarily that she wants it to be me. I was told that I wasn't allowed to come out to some of my family down south. Um, the ones who know don't think it's real. They think there's something wrong with me or that they, I don't know. The ones I haven't told yet, I just try to avoid them. When I'm there, I try to be out of the house as much as possible. I try to just hide in the room I'm given to like stay in or I try to go over to like a park or whatever. It's, there's not many ways to cope with it just because not being able to be who you are is hard. My friends are all pretty supportive. The ones I've kept around are there for me always and uh, my boyfriend, he's cool with pretty much anything so he's pretty supportive too. Um, I do a lot of art, so I can just, I use that a lot to express myself. And I found especially at Sen that everyone is willing to help other people. I've been to a lot of schools, I was one of those kids who it was all over the place and I had never really found a place that was accepting really. 
there were a lot of places that were like, yeah, we love everyone, we're super accepting, but then wouldn't do anything when kids were bullied or would turn the other way if kids were having issues. And here I found that there are actual resources and that the kids actually care about each other. So yeah, I would say it's more of a community than the real world. <laughs> Don't sacrifice yourself for anyone. Don't cut down who you are or hide who you are because you think other people are going to be scared or aren't going to accept it. You have to, you have to be selfish sometimes. If you want to come out, you should. Even if you think that you might lose some friends or maybe you'll embarrass someone. If they're embarrassed of you or if they don't want to be friends with you because of this, they're not worth it. You need to be true to yourself. You need to take care of yourself. And if taking care of yourself means coming out and being who you are, then you need to do that. Thank you, Adnan, for that powerful piece. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We look forward to joining you for episode two. Please share your comments on Twitter regarding the first show to send HSTV. Use the hashtag first episode. Next time, we'll read some of your comments on air. Until then, toots magoots. Time to drop the mic, Edgar. <laughs> I want to be laughing stuff. <laughs> Like yeah. Do I get to now test you on my words? Time to drop the mic, Edgar. <laughs> 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 oh, <no. laughs> What's funny? You just have to do it higher, though. You were like I this. Can. Featuring Sen, sophomore Anthony Rabadon. Wait, can we do that again? He's yeah, a junior. Sure. Episode two, featuring Sen Jun. Sorry, did I say junior? Yeah, he's a freshman. Okay. Uh, oh, like Black Ops 3? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm pretty good. <laughs> Series titled Coming Out, featuring Sen Soft. Action. Hi. Last semester committed. I was here. <laughs> Hi! Ray, <laughs> hello there!